But I think John 1 is my favorite. Let's, let's read about, well, we'll read the first 14 verses. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. The world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Man. Just 14 verses, right? That's, that's why you love John. That's pretty amazing. Father, we love you. Lord, I just pray that you'd help us focus in on the beauty of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you'd help us as we preach, help us as we listen. Lord, it's midweek service. Folks are tired. It's already been a long week, and it's just Wednesday. But Lord, I pray that you would just help move everything out of our minds and just help us to focus in on you. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. You can be seated. I want to preach on this thought. You must be born again. You must be born again. And um, there in, in verse number 13, he says, Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now, the first time you got born, you got born of your mama. And so, you were born of your mama, and that is certainly born of the flesh. This is, when you get born again, you're not getting born of the flesh. It is a spiritual birth, and it's not by the will of the flesh. Can I tell you, our flesh doesn't want to be right. Our flesh don't even want to be right. Our flesh ain't even trying to be right. Now, our spirit, if you're saved... That's an altogether different deal. My, my spirit can't sin. Man, my flesh can't do hardly nothing but. It's a constant battle between the spirit and the flesh. Somebody makes me mad, my spirit wants to pray for them. My flesh does not. My flesh wants to do other things that need not be done. Uh, when somebody says something uh, dumb... My spirit wants to pray for them and just help them. My flesh does not. My flesh wants to point out stupidity and help them along in, 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 in sharp ways. Listen, our, our, our flesh doesn't want to be born again. Our flesh doesn't want to live right. Our, our flesh doesn't care about the things of God. Our flesh cares about the flesh. Our flesh wants to feel good. Our flesh wants to party. Our flesh wants to put everything in its body that's not good. Our flesh wants to look at everything that's not good. Our flesh wants to listen to everything that's not good. Our flesh just wants to do no good thing. That's the flesh. That's that old man. And man, I hate it. But you know, you become a new creature in Christ when you get saved. But man, you still got to struggle with the flesh. And the flesh is an idiot. The flesh doesn't realize how good God is. The flesh, to, and so we have to, I like the Apostle Paul, he talks about I die daily. He's crucified. Nevertheless, he says I live. You know, not I, but Christ liveth in me. Our, we have to crucify our flesh every day and just say, just wake up every day and say, hey, me, we're dead. Let's live for him. That's, if you're living in, in, in the spirit, that's what happens to be filled with the Spirit. The Spirit, Holy Spirit's a person. So you don't get part of the Holy Spirit. When somebody says, oh, I got filled with the Spirit, the Spirit came down again. Listen, honey, the, the, the Holy Spirit isn't coming and going like, like he was in the Old Testament. 
In the Old Testament, you read about the, the Spirit of God departing from Saul. Then an evil spirit from God came and, and, and dwelt in Saul. That's not happening today. We are sealed unto the day of redemption by the Holy Spirit of God after we get saved. And so because of that, uh, Satan can't come and live inside. A, uh, he can whisper in your ear, but he can't come and live inside a saved person. And so, but our flesh, we still battle and we need to crucify. And so what I'm saying is when, when you say, well, I have the Holy Spirit, but I'm not filled with the Holy Spirit. What do you think? You have like a toe and an elbow? The Holy Spirit's a person. What do you got? Two ears, an eyeball, and a left foot? No, you have all the Holy Spirit. The question is, does the Holy Spirit have all of you? See, you got to vacate. You got to vacate the, the the sinful thoughts, the flesh, and the fleshly desires, and you got to do spiritual battle on your knees, and 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 you have to, to spend time in prayer, and you got to spend time fellowshipping with God. You know, if you was on a desert island, your your brain might won't begin to wander, but you know, we have fellowship together, one with another. And so we don't need to let our minds wander. Hey, we need to be uh, fellowshipping with the Lord in prayer and in His Word. And then we need to be fellowshipping with His people, coming together to worship God. And so we want to make sure that we're, we're staying in that fellowship. Uh, it says we're not born of, of, of blood. That already happened with our mama. We're not born of the flesh. We're born of God. It, it's God, not by the will of man, but of God. It says so right there in verse number 13. Not of the of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. It, we're not doing, listen, we're born again. In just a couple of chapters in John chapter number 3, Nicodemus is going to sneak away to Jesus at night. And he says, man, what do I have to do? And he says, you must be born again. He says, what? Do I have to go up inside my mama and come out again? It's not what he's talking about. He, he says, you know, you've already been born of water. Now you need to be born of the Spirit. You must be born again. It, it, it's God. It's God. And listen, we spend so much time in the world, around the world. Be careful. We're in the world. We're not supposed to be of the world. We sing the song, this world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Hey, most people's treasures are not laid up beyond the blue. Most of them are laid up in a 401k, laid up in a fancy car, laid up in a fancy house. Listen, there's so many people tied to home. When they go to heaven, I think they're going to back in because they got their eyes on this world. Can you imagine getting raptured out of this nonsense and backing into heaven? That's how some folk are probably going to be. Backing into heaven. That'd be a good title for a message right there. Backing into heaven. Jesus told old Nicodemus, said, you must be born again. You know, we think about it like this. If you're only born once, you have to die twice. You're going to have that physical death. It's appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. So you die that physical death. But then you go over to Revelation 21, 8, and it's like, lists off this whole thing, and all liars. You're talking about the uh, uh, fearful, unbelieving, idolaters, uh, you know, all these abominable sorcerers, whoremongers, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. See, that second death, death and hell are going to be cast into the lake of fire. That second death, if, you, if you've only been born once, if all you ever got born was from your mama and you ain't get born from your heavenly father, then you're in trouble. You're going to die twice. But if you've been born twice, you only have to die once. And that physical death, you might miss that if Jesus will hurry. But you know, it's just a comforting thought thinking about never having to worry about having to go to hell. There's a sweet peace. We heard that, heard that testimony just a little while ago about somebody being saved and how there was just a difference in their countenance. Just kind of a glow. I don't mean like a halo, like some of y'all so spiritual, you can polish a halo. I'm, I'm talking about just, just a glow on somebody's face. You know what it is? It's joy. It's joy for the first time. Somebody going through big troubles and going through tough times and, and all that, and all of a sudden they realize that Jesus is the only answer to all of our problems. You, can't, you say, well, I need a 12-step program. Okay, walk 12 steps towards Jesus. 
I'm not against the 12-step program as long as you ain't putting your faith and trust in that program. Programs will help you along. Programs can give you good ideas. But a good program that's going to help you is going to push you towards Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody said, well, I just believe Jesus is, a, is just a crutch for some people. Okay, well, limp all the way to hell then. You must be born again. Going to church is just a crutch. It's better than suicide. It's better than alcoholism. At least there's hope and joy in Christ. There's no hope in the bottom of a bottle. I don't care if it's a bottle of pills or a bottle of booze. There's no help, uh, you know, in, in, in worldly programs. that they have. There's just no hope there. There might be some help and some reminders and some order and some things. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying there's no place for that. I'm just saying you better give place to the Lord. You must be born again. Not of the flesh. Not of the will of the flesh. Not of the will of man. You need to be born again in God. Amen. You know, the Bible tells us there in, in verse number 14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And look at it. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The only begotten of the Father. Do you realize that when we get saved, God becomes our Father? The Bible says through the spirit of adoption. So we get adopted in. The only begotten is Jesus. He's the only begotten Son. But we got adopted. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Man, that's... It's just good to, you know, listen, I, I grew up with a stepdad that, that we had a horrible relationship. I'm, hey, I'm sure I was a horrible kid, and I can testify he was a horrible stepdad. And uh, we had fisticuffs and steel toe boots, and I had to move out when I was 17 and finish high school out. You know, it just, it was rough. It was just, it was a tough thing, a uh, tough relationship. And, and I just had to go get my own apartment. I didn't go far. I was in the same apartment complex. <coughs> But we couldn't sleep under the same roof anymore. And uh, I was ready to be a man. 17, I knew everything. It's great to be a genius at such a young age. Complete in every way. And, and he, didn't, he didn't know how to be a good dad. He wasn't raised by a good dad. He had his father absent. He became a man in Vietnam. Did a few tours in Nam. And that's where he grew up. It was just, it was bad. But man, and here's and, and then my father, my 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 biological father, you know, my mom and him split up when I was a kid. He moved up to Amarillo. We didn't have, we moved around so much. We changed phones or had no phones and had no home and all this other stuff. It, we were impossible to find. And so, thankfully, later on, I have a relationship now with my dad just through my aunt. And uh, I love my dad. I love my stepdad. You know, it, things change as you grow up a little bit. And, uh, but you know, one thing that I hated is I didn't get discipled after I got saved. I got saved at nine and I didn't get discipled. And I didn't realize that when I trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, when I received him as, as the scriptures here say, uh, that, that I had a heavenly father, you know, uh, songs hit people in different ways. You know, people grow up in church all the time. Sometimes I think they almost take, take for granted some of the songs, some of the music, some of the doctrine in some of those songs. But I remember sitting off to the side one time and somebody was like singing a special or something. They're like, we have a heavenly father above with eyes full of mercy. Or, you know, what? I, I'm like, what? And a heart full of love? He really cares? have a heavenly father that I don't have to be afraid of in the, in, in the sense of physical fear. I didn't ever have to wonder if he loved me. Have a heavenly father. And you start putting good godly songs together, it, it, it just adds to it, like amplifies your scripture, whereby we, we cry, Abba, Father. Man, when you're having a problem, 
You can go to the Lord. Why? Because Do you know that parents can identify, in a room full of crying kids, you can identify your child's cry? Isn't that a weird thing? But I have a heavenly father, and you know what? He, he hears my cries. And he loves me, and he cares about me. Look at verse number 12. It says, But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Again, I'll remind you, it didn't say even to them that repented of every one of their sins. You, you have to, hey, repentance is part of salvation. Absolutely. Don't ever let anybody tell you repentance isn't part of salvation. It sure is. If you're trusting in yourself or you're trusting in, in, in church or religion or anything else, you need to repent of that unto God. You need to repent unto Christ. Put your full faith and trust in Him. You go, well, it says, you know, faith and repentance. Yes. If you don't believe, you're never going to turn from one thing. But you can't repent of all your sins. When you was a little snot-nosed brat and your mama told you to stop and you said, no, you don't even remember every time, but that was a sin. So if you have to repent of every one of your sins to be saved, you're in trouble. Because you ain't fit to remember them all. I can barely remember all of them. Listen, I try to keep a real short list. As I go through my days as a saved person, I'm like, oh, Lord, I shouldn't have said that. Most of the time it's just, Lord, I shouldn't have thought that. Lord, even though I gave her a funny look, thank you for my wife being there just hushing me before I said something that I was thinking. It just make it double. It's bad enough that I thought it. It'd have been even worse if I said it. You know, Jesus. It says in verse twelve, but as many as received him, as many as received him, and, and look and look what it says there. Even to them that believe on his name. You might hear somebody argue, go, well, it can't be belief because even the demons and Satan, they believe. Yeah, they believe that he exists. They even know who he is. All throughout the New Testament, when Jesus shows up on the scene uh, in different places, you hear the, the demons. They're like, oh, the Son of God, what has that to do with me? You know, and they're crying out to him. Get away from us. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't let us be without a body. Can we at least go in the swine? You sure can. Get in the swine. The Bible says they went off into the deep. Study that. But they're not trusting. And by the way, demons and Satan, there's no redemption for them. There is no forgiveness. Because Jesus, being God, didn't become a God angel. Not your little heads up and down. He became man. See, there's two parts to the deal. You've got the perfection of God. And then you've got the malady of man. So he had to be God to deal with it. To, he's the only one who can handle the wrath of God. And he had to be man. Jesus is the God man. He had to be man to take our place. And he had to be God to deal with what God was going to... Just a hint of God, just a whisper of God's wrath on us would just vaporize us forever and we'd be done. See, angels are different. Sometimes people just try to lump everything together. Don't love it. Listen, don't lump angels, doctrines of angels, in with doctrines of salvation. There is no salvation for them. Don't lump in groups of people. Jews are not Gentiles, are not the church. Do you rightly dividing? Amen. You better learn learn who's what. God's still going to deal with the Jew. God's not done with the Jews. Stand by. He's going to deal with them. He's going to deal with them during the time of tribulation. Going to deal with them all the way through the millennial reign. Listen, they owe him, and it's going to be quite a time. But listen, it's good. It's good to be born again. By the way, it's not just good for you to be born again. It's good for you to help somebody else get born again. You have to help them be born of the Spirit. Do you know that my kids, 
did not come out of my wife, but we got paperwork. All of them got brand new birth certificates. I'm the father, she's the mother on the birth certificate. Do you realize even though you were lost, undone, and bound for a devil's hell, when you trusted in Jesus Christ, you can clearly see your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Amen. Paperwork's done, honey. The paperwork makes it official. If you're found in the Lamb's Book of Life, you're going in. If not, you're going straight to hell. See, our goal when we're dealing with people, and I said all that to say this, you must be born again. In other words, our goal is not to get somebody to repeat a prayer after us. Anybody can re repeat a prayer. Lost people can re repeat a prayer. You go, why would lost people repeat a prayer? Because they're told to. You show up with your big Bible and, and, and talk to them and you're the boss and you just tell them to repeat this prayer, they'll repeat it after you. You go, well, that's ignorant. Yep, and they do it all the time. Got to give... Ten Hail Marys and five Our Fathers. Hail Mary, full of grace. No, no, no. Hail Mary, full of grace. Hail Mary, full of grace. How many beats is that? Hail Mary, full of grace. Uh, all good. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hail, Father, with... You know, what? It's vain repetition. I've heard people practically stutter in a prayer and somebody was repeating a prayer and really mean it in their heart and just repeat the mistake. The goal is not to get somebody just to repeat a prayer. You have, they need to understand that they're lost, that Jesus Christ died a substitutionary death for them on the cross, that the cross was not about Jesus and a bunch of Jews. The cross was about me and you. The death, burial, and resurrection. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified freely forever. Hey, forever. Hey. It needs to be personal. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hey. It's not believing in him that he existed. Any historian with any sense can prove that he really existed. It's not believing in him. It's believing on him. Look, look, again at, look again at the verse right there. In verse uh, 12. At the end of the, even to them that believe on his name. That didn't just mean believe that he existed some 2,000 years ago. It literally means that you're putting your faith and trust in him. You're putting your, your faith on him, on his name, on the name of Jesus. Why? Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. Listen, he's the Lord of all. He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. Don't cheapen salvation. Wouldn't it be neat? I mean, I just think it would be fantabulous. If we got to heaven and a bunch of people that we led to the Lord actually showed up in heaven. Amen. Don't be a sloppy soul winner. Amen. Now, I don't think anybody in our church does that. I, I, I think we're, we're pretty thorough. But people need to realize that they're not just checking a box on a piece of paper. They're not just checking a box on a, on a visitor card. That's not what we're doing. They have to believe that Jesus Christ died for them because that's the only way they can get to heaven. Right. Any of their human attempts are futile, not by the will of the flesh, not by the will of man, but God. But by God. God has to do it. There has to be a transaction. The, 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 the lost for the blood of Christ you have, to, you have to realize that you're lost and that Jesus, listen, it is finished. He's already died for all the lost people. They just need to know why. And they need to believe in why. They need to understand why. Sometimes we wonder why we lead people to the Lord and they don't ever follow through. They don't ever grow in Christ. They don't ever, sometimes we're just sloppy. You say, well, I don't know. We, we, we got them to commit to baptism. Well, okay, good, but don't win them, wet them, and forget them. Yeah. Win them, wet them, and forget them. Oh, they didn't even get wet. Come on, man. Let's help somebody. We're, our faith ought to be a tree of life. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that wins souls is wise. If we can win people, 
and get them to give a public testimony through the baptistry. Then we disciple them. When they begin to grow, then they'll tell two friends. And Anybody old enough to remember the old Alberto V05 commercial? One time we was homeless living with my grandma, and that, that was the only commercial that was on. It was hot outside. It was like 1980, talking about some kind of heat wave out there. I, we survived. We cook. We'd sneak out there in the hen house and get a couple of eggs, and we'd go fry them on top of Granny's car that she used as a storage building on the hood of the car or out on the sidewalk and stuff. Man, it was 1980. It was 108, 110. It was ridiculous. It was so hot, so we had to stay inside. She didn't have an air conditioner. We, she had one of them swamp coolers. And that joker wouldn't even, like the drip effect, you had to go outside and spray that joker down like every 10 minutes. Anybody, can I get a witness on a swamp cooler? Amen on some little swamp coolers. Made me want to move to the swamp. And, but hey, that summer we had to spend mostly indoors so you didn't die. Man, during some of them, well, it was General Hospital. Remember the year, it was when Luke and Laura got married. I remember, I was a little kid. That's the only time I ever watched a soap opera in my life. It was 1980 during the heat wave. Luke and Laura got married on General Hospital. And, and, and they was running them Alberto V05 commercials. And that lady said, well, I'll tell two friends, and they'll tell two friends, and they'll tell two friends, and, they'll, and all of a sudden the whole page was filled up. Man, wouldn't it be great if we'd just tell two friends, and they'd tell two friends, and they'd tell two friends? We could change the world if we'd just tell two friends and, and disciple some people so they'd tell two friends. Wouldn't that be a thing? We don't have to sell shampoo. We don't have anything to sell. We share the salvation. It, it's already paid for. It's not a pyramid scheme. It's already paid for. We're just trying to get people to believe. We're trying to get people to understand their lost condition. We're trying to get people to understand you must be born again. Jesus Christ, right here in this chapter, he's God. He's the creator. He is the light inside. He's the light of men, all men. John the Baptist came not to talk about himself, not to talk about a, a Wheaties box, not to talk about something. He didn't come to talk about camel fashion. He didn't talk, come to sell, you know, uh, you know whatever. He, he didn't come to uh, talk about his dietary plan. Nobody was wanting to eat locust. He wasn't, you know, selling lo locust O's cereal. All he did was come and try to point people to Jesus. Even from prison, he was turning his disciples. He had disciples. He was turning his disciples over to Jesus. Why? Because it's all about Jesus. If you want to go to heaven, you must be born again. Father in heaven, we love you. We thank you for being good to us. And Lord... Pray that you'd help us to be good soul winners. Help us, Lord, just to turn people towards Christ. They don't need the wisdom of this world. They don't need our wisdom. They need the truth of the Word of God. They need to know that Jesus died for them. They need to know that He was buried. He carried our sins far away to the heart of the earth and rising he had power over his own death and verily verily he has power over ours he died and paid the price for everyone Lord if there's one here tonight that's not saved I pray Lord that through looking at the scriptures today they put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ and for those that are saved I pray that they'd realize that God, through them, may be the only hope one of their friends, co-workers, fellow students ever has of being saved. Lord, I pray that you'd just help us to be thorough in our, in our witness for you. I pray, Lord, that you'd help us to be dedicated. I pray that you'd help us to be aggressive. I pray, Lord, that we would just take a shot every chance we get to try to win somebody to you that they can believe on you, receive you, have the power to become the sons of God through the spirit of adoption. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. And it's in his sweet and precious name that we pray.